Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Trino here. Today I'm looking at another video from World Video Bible School, the gift that keeps on giving. In this video they talk about how the earth might look old to some people, but old in comparison to what? Also apparently there will be something about miracles. And just a quick reminder that the fundraiser for Project Share is still going on, so if you've got a couple extra bucks this month consider helping out. Let's go! To many people, the Earth looks extremely old. That might have something to do with the fact that it is extremely old. Well, I mean, I guess that depends on how you define extremely, but if we're just talking older than our human brains can adequately conceptualize, then yes, it is extremely old. Not thousands of years old, but billions of years old. I mean, yeah. It's hard to have a rudimentary understanding of the rock cycle and still come to the conclusion that the Earth is only thousands of years old. When these individuals hear a creationist like myself talk about a young Earth that's thousands of years old, they wonder how someone could believe such. Yeah. Even when I was a creationist, I never actually formulated any beliefs regarding the age of the Earth. This stemmed from the fact that I developed an interest in astronomy before I self-fundamentalized into creationism, and because I learned about astronomy first, I knew that the universe had to be at least old enough to allow the light from distant stars to reach us, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see the distant stars. And the creationist arguments regarding this never really sat well with me. So while I would deny evolution and agree that God created us specially some six to ten thousand years ago, I never came to a firm conclusion about the age of the Earth, instead preferring to just not think about it. But when I did accidentally think about it, it usually ended up being incredulity at people like Ken Ham believing that God created stars in such a way that they sometimes would have been created as a supernova, but with light already in transit from before they went nova, showing them as being a star. The first recorded instance of a supernova was in 185 CE. That particular supernova, creatively named SN 185, is over 9,000 light years away. The Earth was supposed to have been about 4,000 years old when it was observed, so a star somehow blew up 5,000 years before the beginning of the universe. The latest one is SN 2014J, which, as you might have guessed from these super creative names, was observed in 2014. That one is 12 million light years away, so it also exploded before the universe began, before it was even created, it exploded. So yeah, my point is that even as a creationist, I couldn't see how people could believe in a young Earth. I never quite made the jump to old Earth creationism, but at least I didn't jump on board with the young Earth. How could anyone look at Earth and think it was created less than 10,000 years ago? First, even if people didn't always have old Earth impressions, the man-made theory of evolution demands such an interpretation of our planet else the entire theory of evolution would have to be abandoned. I mean, yes, evolution does take time, but our discovery of the fact that enough time has passed for evolution to have occurred was made before Darwin was even born. It's not like he came up with evolution and then deep time sprung up as a concept to bolster the theory which we had already decided should replace creationism. Now the fact is, evolution should be abandoned anyway since it's impossible, whether the Earth is young or old. Oh, well. Since you said it so confidently, it must be true. Guess I'll abandon it then. So, what's your theory that accounts for how the 16,000 or so species that represent on the Ark turned into the millions of species that we have today if evolution is impossible? Because usually that one is solved with an appeal to evolution, with the caveat that it's only microevolution, which is literally impossible since microevolution is defined as evolution below the species level, so you can't have an increase in the total number of species with just microevolution, by definition. What's more, many dating methods exist that point to a young Earth. Usually when a creationist says dating method and claims it points to a young Earth, what they're referring to is when they find something that is less than 6,000 years old, often when dated with conventional dating methods. Either that, or they mean that when they assume something, like the recession rate of the moon, has been happening at a constant rate for the entirety of the Earth's history, and based on that, usually incorrect, assumption, the Earth can't be older than X, with X being a number that is usually greater than 6,000 years but less than 1 billion years. In other words, not actual dating methods. They just get ignored by most people. And rightly so. 
An actual dating method can only say how old a thing is and has no impact on the age of anything else aside from that one thing. So if you find a coral reef that is 4,000 years old, that doesn't mean that all coral reefs were wiped out in the Great Flood 4,000 years ago. That just means you found a 4,000-year-old coral reef. Good for you, Gold Star. So, given that we know that a 4,000-year-old coral reef exists, and we also know that 4.4 billion-year-old zircon crystals exist, the Earth must therefore be at least 4.4 billion years old. The reef turns out to be entirely irrelevant when it comes to the age of the planet. But in this video, he doesn't actually mention any of these dating methods, he just implies that creationists have dating methods that show a young Earth, and wants you to trust him on that. No doubt, since evolutionary theory demands an old Earth, it should come as no surprise that many people can't help but see the Earth as being billions of years old. Well, as I pointed out earlier, the evidence for an old Earth is so compelling that I could never quite bring myself to deny it, even as an evolution-denying creationist. So it's not so much that evolution demands an old Earth, therefore the Earth is old, it's that the Earth is old, therefore there was enough time for evolution to happen. But define old. How does anyone actually know what a billion-year-old Earth looks like? Well, we know the Earth is at least a billion years old because of various dating methods. We can also reconstruct the geologic history of the Earth by examining the rock layers, and absent any radiometric methods, we can calculate approximately how long it would have taken all those layers to form. And it's more than a billion years. So an Earth that is at least a billion years old looks like the Earth that we live on. Older humans can be identified accurately as old because their actual birth dates can be known. That is, people witnessed their births and gave them birth certificates. So, how do we determine the age of someone without a birth certificate? Well, for starters, we can look at them. Do they look old? This can give us a good preliminary estimate, but looks can be deceiving. We could take x-rays and examine the skeleton. The skull changes as we age, and the joints on the skull become smaller as we get older, so that can give you a decent estimate as well. You can also check for bone density. Older people tend to have less dense bones. Ossification is another indicator. Some of our bones fuse together as we age, and measuring this can give us a pretty accurate estimate. So really, if we want to figure out the age of a person and they don't have a birth certificate, we look at the evidence that can be found in that person's body to determine their age. A person's age might also be reasonably estimated because their appearance can be compared to both older and younger people. So what, are you saying that first we need to find a planet that's older than the Earth and then one that is younger, and only then can we estimate their ages? The same thing can be said for animals and plants. I mean, maybe sometimes, but definitely not all the time. Here is a 100-year-old oak tree. Here is a 300-year-old oak tree. Just by looking at them, I personally would guess that the 100-year-old tree is the older of the two. Though, admittedly, that's probably got something to do with the Spanish moss giving it the false appearance of age. But that's kind of my point here. Just looking at something and guessing is not a good way to figure out anything's real age. For trees, you could take a sample and count the rings. Oak trees are usually pretty accurate for dendrochronological purposes. People can know exactly when various animals were born or when a tree was planted, but what about the Earth as a whole? Well, we know it's about 4.54 billion years old with an error range of 50 million years. So we can't know it anywhere near as accurately as we can figure out the age of a tree or animal. After all, 50 million years is a few orders of magnitude longer than the entire existence of human civilization. But in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty damn near accurate. And we probably never will be able to pin it down more narrowly than that for the simple reason that it's entirely possible that 50 million years is just how long it took the solar system to form, including the Earth. So when dating material from the beginnings of the solar system, there will be a potential age range of 50 million years. No one was alive when this or any other planet was born. Why would they need to be? We don't figure out how old trees are by looking for human records of when that tree was first planted or discovered. We do it by studying the tree itself. Why would it be any different for determining the age of a planet? No one was present on Earth to see the first rock formed, hill raised, or canyon created. Were you there is literally a nonsensical argument that seems to be a thought-stopping technique akin to those used by cults to stop people from questioning the leader. Don't like the plethora of evidence that points to an old Earth? No need to consider the merits of the evidence, just ask, were you there, and be done with it. 
How can anyone reasonably say the Earth looks billions of years old? Because, as you yourself pointed out at the beginning of the video, the Earth looks billions of years old. Old compared to what? Okay, nice little word game there. Yes, old is a relative term. A cat is old when it's 15 years old. A human of the same age is just a child that can't even be trusted with the responsibility of driving yet. So in that sense, yes, old is relative and based on comparison. But when we're talking about the age of the Earth, it's not some nebulous old in the same sense that we would call a 97-year-old person old and a 22-year-old person young. It's old in that we have measured it having existed for about the same amount of time as our orbit takes times 4.4 billion. So I guess if you really want it to be relative, old compared to how long it takes for the Earth to complete one solar orbit. People who contend that the Earth appears billions of years old must also discount the very real possibility that one or more great catastrophes could have occurred in the past to drastically change the appearance of the Earth. Quite the contrary, we know of a number of such catastrophes. We just don't blindly accept the one that you want to have happened because there is literally no evidence for it and a plethora of evidence against it. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and local floods radically alter the looks of certain places on Earth. Yeah, and we can see evidence of such events in the geologic record going back billions of years. How does that help your case? Consider how a tree that has been struck by lightning or damaged during a flood might appear much older than it is. Are you trying to suggest that flood damage or lightning strikes can change the number of rings in a tree? Or can change its carbon-14 content? Or are you just saying that weathered things look old, and sometimes things can become weathered quickly, therefore the Earth is just weathered to appear older than it is? Because that is demonstrably not true. Newly formed igneous rocks from volcanoes often appear old though they're new. They only appear old when cherry-picking your data. There are several papers out there that the authors have set out to date inclusions in the newly formed rocks for various reasons, and the inclusions in the rocks are necessarily older than the rock itself. Creationists love to take these papers and ignore the fact that they are talking about inclusions, and then present them as though they are dating the newly formed rocks themselves. If you have to misrepresent the data in order to make it agree with you, then can you really claim the high ground here? In truth, Christians rightly interpret the earth based upon the fact that only a few thousand years ago, God supernaturally altered the earth's appearance forever by causing all the fountains of the great deep to break up and the windows of heaven to open, bringing rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Translation? If it looks older than I believe it is based on this book of ancient Hebrew mythology, then it was magic. Okay, fine, you're welcome to believe that your god is so deceptive that he would do this in a way that would make the earth appear significantly older than it actually is, if you like, but that whole supernatural qualifier firmly removes this hypothesis from the scientific realm, and so this hypothesis should most definitely be left out of any scientific discussion, classroom or otherwise. Now. Go back and look at your YouTube channel and watch the video where Kyle Butt complains about discrimination in scientific publications, where they refuse to publish creationist papers. Do you think that this appeal to the supernatural might have something to do with that? If you need to completely destroy the laws of physics in order for your hypothesis to work, and you don't have any evidence for such a breakdown of physics, then the journals are right to reject you. Most of the oil, coal beds, and fossil graveyards in the Earth which many contend are evidence of an old earth, can be, and have been, rationally explained as a result of the worldwide flood of Noah's day. Yeah, and usually these explanations are appeals to the fact that it is possible to artificially produce coal and oil relatively quickly. Which is true. But in oil's case, the hydrocarbon chains have different lengths than naturally occurring oil, betraying the different processes that were used to form them, not to mention all the geology surrounding oil deposits that require old ages in order to work. And for coal, regardless of how quickly it can form, it is usually found deposited in terrestrial river floodplains, with signs of terrestrial environments all through them, such as river channels, levees, soil horizons, fossil plant roots, and even the creationist favorite upright fossil trees complete with roots indicating that they died where they grew. So, sure, coal can form quickly in the right circumstances, but the environments that the coal beds are putting on display cannot. In short, even if it could be proven that the Earth looks very old, 
evolutionists cannot rationally deny that such apparent age could be the result of one or more great catastrophes. Yes, we can. All of the supposed evidence for these great catastrophes have adequate naturalistic explanations if the Earth is old, but they require severe misrepresentation in order to look like maybe it could have been magic. So yes, we can rationally deny the flood model as the explanation for the Earth's apparent age. The fact that the Earth appeared older than it actually was at creation is also perfectly logical in light of the nature of God's miracles. Oh? You have some insight into the nature of God's miracles that could explain how they work? Or why they never seem to work the same way twice? Like, seriously, what are the physics behind God having extended the daylight hours for Joshua to win his battle? Did the whole solar system have to stop, or just the earth and moon? And why would Jesus have to heal a blind guy by spitting in his eyes? That's just gross and unsanitary. Or how about just an actual explanation for why the rock layers are so perfectly delineated? You don't see a gradient like you would from one flood event. Is that a miracle? Did God go out of his way to bury things in a manner that would lead to the obvious conclusion being an old earth rather than the flood? When Jesus miraculously turned water to wine, he didn't plant a vine, wait for the grapes to grow over the course of several years, and then harvest them. No, he just performed a party trick that any half-decent magician could do. And what's more, this is the first miracle that Jesus ever performed. His first one, the highest priority for God's first demonstration of his power in human form, was to turn water into wine in front of a bunch of drunk people so they could get even more drunk. And don't try and tell me they weren't drunk. In verse 10, the master of the feast says, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Which very strongly suggests that the people have drunk freely at this point, and normally would be considered too drunk to notice that they were being served bad wine. So, just a thought, Jesus approves of party animals. He supernaturally bypassed this normal, time-laden process and instantaneously made... An extremely tasty drink. Allegedly. Like I said, it's a trick that magicians can do today. In fact, Wolfgang Moser did one better. He poured water in a pot, and then from the pot poured red wine in one glass and white wine in the next glass, and then finished off with a glass of beer for himself before going through two more people, one of whom got a mixed drink, and the other got a cup of coffee, all out of the same pot. The people tasting it assured us that the drinks were real, not just colored water, and the glasses and pots were inspected by them before the trick was performed. So, obviously this is miraculous, right? When Jesus fed several thousand men, women, and children with only five loaves of bread and two fish, he didn't make the large amounts of bread needed to feed this many people after planting a crop of wheat, waiting for months for it to grow, and then harvesting, threshing, grinding, and baking it. You're right. That one would be a bit more impressive. So can you demonstrate that it actually happened? Maybe a repeat performance? Again, Jesus bypassed a lengthy natural process and miraculously created bread. Yeah, sure. In a 2,000-year-old story. And it's not the age that makes it unbelievable, it's the fact that it's a story. If I found a biography of Helen Keller that said she became deafblind by miraculously healing a deaf person and a blind person by taking their deafness and blindness on herself, I would not believe it. You would have to have more than just, this book says so. At least if you want to have any chance of convincing anyone, that is. Likewise, God made the creation full grown. He made the fruit tree, not just a seed that would eventually grow into a fruit-bearing tree. So does that mean he made a bunch of already exploded stars, but with their light headed to Earth as though they had not yet exploded? Because there are a bunch of those supernova out there, far enough away that they can't have gone nova in the last 6,000 years, and yet we observed them when it happened. He created every winged bird, not eggs from which birds would hatch months later. You know, if we assume that the days in Genesis are meant in a more metaphorical or allegorical sense, he easily could have created a bunch of eggs and planted a bunch of seeds and waited for the things to grow and hatch. And this is supported by the Bible. Genesis 3.8 explicitly says that God planted a garden in Eden. It doesn't say that he made it all appear fully developed. He planted it. It took time. Why would the Bible say that he planted a garden if that's not what he did? Especially in a part of the Bible that you want us to take literally. He created a full-grown man capable of walking, talking, working, and procreating. I feel like you're missing the point. 
We don't say that the Earth is old because it superficially appears to be old. It's because we can directly measure the ages of certain materials, and these ages have been determined to be in the billions of years in many cases. Now, sure, you could appeal to some form of Last Thursdayism if you like, where God created the world in a way to, to make it look older than it is, but then the God you're wanting me to believe in has to be extremely deceitful in order to do that. For people, it kind of makes sense. Make Adam fully grown so that he can just get right to work. But why the planet? Why would he make billions of years worth of geologic history when he could just make it look young? It's not like the planet is incapable of doing its job if it is younger. There's no reason the rocks that we can date had to come back with old ages. All the Earth had to be is a rock with a certain proportion of minerals, gases, and other chemicals on it to allow us to live. It didn't need such a rich geologic history to accomplish this. Nor did it need some stars to be created dead, but appearing to still be burning when everything else was created. God miraculously made a mature creation. Which was a really dumb thing to do if he expected us to believe that his creation was not mature. Certainly one of the most amazing, time-defying, mature miracles of God's creation was the creation of the heavenly bodies on day four. Yeah, it took him three whole days to figure out the solar system, but then the stars are just done in a single sentence. Almost like the people who wrote the story didn't understand that our sun was just one of many stars, most of which have solar systems of their own. God had previously made light, intrinsic light, on day one of the creation. What exactly is intrinsic light? Intrinsic generally would just mean that it originates from within whatever thing you're talking about. So it would be a weird way to say it, but you could say that sunlight is intrinsic to the sun. Are you trying to say that there was just ambient light with no light sources? Photons bouncing around that came from nowhere? That's just a weird way to say that. But sure, God magically made light with no light sources. On day four, he made the generators of light. Since light travels something like six trillion miles per year, and since some stars are an estimated 15 billion light years away, evolutionists assume that the universe must be at least 15 billion years old. I mean, as always, there's more to it than that, but yeah, if by evolutionists you mean astronomers, that is how long it would have taken the light from these distant objects to reach us. Otherwise, how could we see the light from stars that are so far away? There are two main creationist theories that I've heard on this matter. Jason Lyle has his light travels faster in some directions than in others hypothesis, which, as absurd as it sounds, actually has its basis in a real problem in physics, but as per usual, the creationist side is misrepresenting it. It only applies under an extreme magnetic field, and this was predicted in the 1970s and was experimentally verified in 2011. And under a magnetic field that is approximately 20,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field, it made a difference in velocity of about one billionth of a millisecond which is essentially negligible, even on the scale of billions of light years. The other option, and the one you seem to be aiming for here, is the God made the light in transition thing, which then just makes God look like a deceptive asshole. He made things look as though events had already happened, and allowed us to watch the light showing these events as having happened, but none of it is real. It's just an illusion. God tweaked the light to make it look one way when in reality it was completely different. And it's not just light either, the gravity waves had to match it. So those black holes whose collision caused a gravity wave that was detected in 2015? Yeah, they never crashed into each other. God made the gravity waves already most of the way to the Earth when he made the universe. God could have just made one black hole and not had to bother with any of the gravity waves, but no, he wanted there to be two objects creating waves that looked like they had been traveling for over a billion years, only to merge into one object for reasons. Now, maybe he just wanted us to be able to do the science or whatever, but why couldn't he have planned a gravity wave generating event 6,000 light years from the Earth instead of over a billion? It strains credulity to believe that God wants us to believe in a young Earth, but made single black holes that when we observe them appear to have come from a merger of two other black holes that, according to this model, never even existed in the first place. Once again, the answer, or at least a major part of the answer, to this supposed conundrum goes back to the fact that God worked an amazing miracle at creation. Is it an amazing miracle to be constrained to our human concept of time? Wouldn't it be a greater miracle to make the universe that is older than it is even possible for humans to conceptualize? Seriously, the Bible says on more than one occasion that the heavens are a sign of God's glory and power, or whatever. 
I don't know about you, but I would find it way more awe-inspiring if it were demonstrably older than I can even imagine than for it to all just be 10,000 years old but made to look older because God had to stick to six literal days for some unknown reason. Or worse, because the ancient Hebrews were too stupid to figure out that a week should be six working days and one resting day if the creation story weren't literal 24-hour days. When God created the heavenly bodies, the generators of light, on day four, He simultaneously and supernaturally made their light to appear on earth. Yeah, I called it. God magically made the light already in transit. That is such a bad explanation. Like, even when I was a creationist, I couldn't accept these lousy explanations. The lack of anything even resembling a good reason for us to be able to see stars that are billions of light years away is why I didn't ever get around to officially declaring my belief in a young Earth, instead preferring to leave that as a nebulous concept. Light that might naturally take long amounts of time to reach Earth miraculously reached Earth in an instant. Magic. Just as God had said on day one, let there be light, and there was light. On day four, he said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, and it was so. I don't know, man. To me, that just looks like the ancient Hebrews didn't understand just how vast the universe is. And since the cosmology of the Bible, if taken absolutely literally, not the wishy-washy literal that you're advocating for, but actually taking it at its word, it depicts the universe in the same way as the other Near Eastern civilizations of the time. So it's either magic, or the Hebrew cosmology was similar to its neighbors and none of them understood what stars really are. These lights were created to give light on the earth and to divide the day from the night. God also set them in the firmament of the heavens for signs and seasons and for days and years. Yeah, for signs and seasons. They are for telling the seasons, sure, but they are also for signs. In other words, astrology, predicting the future using the stars. And not in the condemned along with witchcraft kind of way, this is God explicitly stating that astrology is one of the reasons he invented the stars. Why don't more creationists practice astrology as their Lord intended? God had a purpose for creating the heavenly bodies. Yeah, he magically made them with their light already en route to the earth so that you could magically predict things with them. Sounds legit. And he made them so that man benefited from them without having to wait long periods of time for their light to reach earth. Yup. God made the whole fucking universe just for our benefit. But now here, my discussion of gravitational waves becomes relevant again, because he would have had to make them en route as well. But they are not lights in the heavens. They are not for signs or seasons. Why would their waves not be left alone? That would actually be a decent bit of evidence for a young Earth. Sure, the visible light stretches across a sphere that is some 46 billion light years wide, but we can't detect anything outside of the visible light spectrum more than 10 to 20,000 light years away. Surely such an accomplishment is within God's power. You're already up to your eyebrows in magical explanations for things that we have excellent natural explanations for. Why not go one deeper in a demonstration that would support the idea of a young Earth? And disclaimer, I actually have no idea how big our visible light sphere would be if the universe really was 6,000 years old. It's not a straightforward calculation thanks to the expansions of space-time, so take my 10 to 20,000 year estimate with a grain of salt. Starlight didn't have to travel for 15 billion years before reaching Earth. When God made Adam and Eve two days after his creation of the heavenly bodies, the first couple immediately profited from God's miraculous creation of starlight. Yes, which is why my question then becomes, why did they also profit from a bath of all of the rest of the EM spectrum, not to mention the gravity waves and anything else that is invisible to the naked eye? Why wouldn't God just let those ones obey normal physics in a display of his power and glory? Hell, even with just the visible light, Adam and Eve didn't have access to the Hubble Space Telescope. They didn't need the visible light from Icarus, the farthest individual star to have ever been imaged, at a distance of 5 billion light years. They couldn't see it either way. Yet there it lay, for signs and seasons, for people who couldn't even see it, even though its light was reaching them. God spoke the stars and their light rays into existence. Similar to how God created full-grown trees in one day 
Well, I mean, he planted the garden after he created Adam. I guess you could argue that he was planting full-grown trees. But when you're the one doing the creating, why create a tree out of soil and then go through the motion of planting it when you could have just created a full-grown tree in the soil? There seems to be some inconsistency here. Which, if cut down, may have had dozens or hundreds of visible tree rings. Oh, now that's a whole new can of worms right there. Why would they have visible tree rings if they were created fully grown? Tree rings are a representation of a growing season. If they were made full grown, that is one growing season. There should only be one ring to rule them all. Unless God was deliberately trying to mess with us, there is no reason to give them tree rings right from the beginning. Indeed, considering the nature of God's miracles at creation, a star that might appear to be extremely old is actually only a few thousand years old. Just, you know, any stars that you can't see with the naked eye were still up there being completely useless for the purpose that God himself said they had, and yet their light had to be reaching us because reasons. The fact that the earth and the universe may appear much older than it is in no way bolsters the case for evolution. I mean, evolution stands on its own merits, but it did take time. Sure, you can last Thursday it away if you want, claiming that the species were created already appearing to be in transition or whatever, but ultimately, you're appealing to magic in an attempt to dismiss vast mountains of evidence, and then you want this appeal to magic to be taken seriously in scientific communities. Sorry, that's just not how it works. God's Word reveals that both the miracle of a mature creation and the cataclysmic flood are adequate explanations Firstly, the Bible does no such thing. It reads like an attempt by an ancient people to understand things that were beyond their comprehension. Second, even if the Bible were trying to provide an adequate explanation for the appearance of an old earth when the earth is in fact young, then it failed miserably. A story of an event for which there is zero evidence is not an adequate explanation for why the vast majority of several different scientific fields of study, including but not limited to astronomy, biology, and geology, are wrong. That's it for this one. Today's comment of the day comes to us from Joe, whatever that last name is, who says, I know you're not very appreciative of Christ's personal sacrifice on your behalf, but one day when you stand before him, he will show you how he didn't have to. He could have stuck with carpentry, but he chose to sacrifice himself to save any who appreciate God's gift. Uh, Joe, I know that Jesus didn't have to die to save us from himself. That was my whole point. He is supposed to be all-powerful, meaning there didn't ever need to be blood sacrifices. He could just choose to forgive people without something having to die first. If he can't do that, then he's not all-powerful. If he can do that and he chooses not to, then he likes to wallow in blood. Thanks for watching. Special thanks as always to my patrons, Lynn Dobbs, Mark McManus, What Jesus, and all the rest, who are the miracles that make my channel possible. If you'd like to keep my channel firmly outside the realm of science, you can join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar per week over at patreon.com slash vice rhino. If you feel so inclined, you can also support the channel through direct donation or my Amazon wishlist, which are linked in the description, as well as my social media accounts and my P.O. Box address, and also my podcast thing if you want to hear this all in one go without uh, YouTube doing its weird things that it likes to do sometimes there's a podcast link down below you can use this as a podcast podcast i'll say podcast again podcast see you next time